What's up guys, on this episode of Formula Supra, I travel to Judd Power in England, where this engine came from. I take a tour of the facility with John Judd himself, and also watch this engine get dynoed by their technicians on their engine dyno, where you're gonna see some 11,000 RPM hits on the dyno, it's gonna be sick. But before we get to all that, I'm gonna bring you guys through a brief history of Judd Power and a lot of the badass engines that they produced over the years. The story starts in 1971 when John Judd and Jack Brabham started engine developments together, which is the parent company to Judd Power. They started this to produce their own competitive race engines for Jack Brabham's racing efforts in Formula One. Judd Power has since provided race engines for many different racing series throughout the years, including Formula One, IndyCar, Kart, Le Mans, and more recently, some of the fastest hill climb cars on the planet. Back in 1991, Judd introduced the first of many GV family engines, which was a 72 degree V10 engine, three and a half liter that they provided to Scuderia Italia to race in Formula One that year. And that is exactly where this motor was derived from. This is the GV four liter V10 that was produced for sports car racing in Le Mans to race 24 hours. John Judd partnered with Yamaha to continue development on his engines around 92, 93. Yes, the same Yamaha that makes dirt bikes, pianos, street bikes, and so on. They actually produced their own Formula One engines previously to partnering with Judd. They used the Judd GV engine as their V10 base, and they continued development on that with many different variations of the engine, including the OX10, A, B, and the OX10C, which changed to a three liter in 95, due to the Formula One rule changes. And the final generation of the Judd Yamaha partnership saw the three liter OX11 AC and D, which were known in-house as the Judd JV engines and were produced from 96 to 97. gives the driver a great deal more control and it means the engine can do more things in relation to the, 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 the throttle position. So step forward for Yamaha. Begins. After Judd's Formula One efforts ended with Yamaha around 97, 98, they developed a new V10 to go sports car racing. And this is where my engine came onto the scene, the GV4. The GV4 was a four liter V10, which was introduced as an alternative cost-effective power plant where they saw a lot of success in Le Mans. It was derived from the Formula One program, utilizing a lot of the same parts, but punched to four liters and made for endurance racing. In 2007, Judd introduced the DB line of V8 engines using the 3.4 liter for LMP2 customers. The Judd DB V8 was also adopted by two legendary hill climb drivers that almost don't even need an introduction. George Plaza and his BMW and Red O'Meisel and his Mercedes. And that's where it basically started for me all those years ago, watching those videos on YouTube of them echo through the hills with those Judd V8 engines, absolutely sounding incredible. And that was all the inspiration I needed to make this project come to reality. So this engine was 10 years in the making for me, literally. I found it for sale last year on a website called Indie Competition. A few months after I found this thing for sale, I found out I was getting the drive with Papadakis Racing in the Toyota Corolla Racing hatchback. So I knew 
that I could sell my 8.6, which I did, came up on some cash to buy this thing, and that's what basically started it all. I then contacted Judd, and they said that I should send the motor over to them to get an injector upgrade for some high impedance injectors, and also get it dyno tuned on their engine dyno by their technicians and have everything set up. So next thing you know, the motor's headed to Europe, I'm headed to Europe, to the headquarters at Judd, and John Reed had a whip up a dyno harness for our MoTeC ECU in like three days time. Next day, air it over to Judd for them to check everything out, make sure it was okay. And fingers crossed that when I got there and landed in England, everything was going according to plan and I could film it getting dyno. And when we got there, John Judd Jr. gave us an amazing tour of the facility. And after that, we saw the engine getting tuned on the engine dyno. This is it. It's my GV4 V10, four liter, series one. Getting um, sorted for the engine dyno by Ron here. Well, roll. Thanks, Ron. Ron. All right. <laughs> you guys wanted to boroscope it, pressure test it, and then there was a, a high impedance injector upgrade that they wanted to do. So um, that all got done. I thought that was obviously a great idea. And while it's here, get it mapped on the MoTeC on their engine dyno by their technicians. So uh, when we get the motor back in the States and the chassis is ready to accept the engine, and we go to fire it up, everything's pretty much handled and we can just do our own leak down test and then pretty much hit the track. So uh, that's what I'm pumped about is getting everything pretty much sorted and dialed with the engine here before we even get it to the States. John, what do you think about adding nitrous to the, to the engine? <laughs> we've, got, we've got no experience of that. It's, it's, it's your engine, so... <laughs> well, I think since it's 10 cylinders and you add 100 shot of nitrous somewhere, it's only 10 horsepower per cylinder. I figure the pressure shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> That's something we can, yeah, we can talk about. So okay. See what, see what we think. Because it's not something we've got any, any experience with. Yeah, yet. yeah. <laughs> How's everything looking for that? Uh, well, Sam, Sam's in sorting out your remote okay. installation. And yeah. Applications. He's our, he's our resident motor expert. That's all. That's what the title that is. No, no pressure there. <laughs> the pin out and everything that we had sent with the yep. harness over there, it's all good. It looks okay, it looks okay to me yeah, okay. at the moment. Yeah, cool. yeah. yeah. Good. Done not a bad job with it, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's the he, John, um, he's the, our MoTeC guy in the States, uh -huh. and he does all the tuning for a lot of cars. And, right. Yeah. He's, Knows, he knows his stuff. He knows his way around it. Yeah, yeah. So you're about to go in there and I'll go to check the ignition and find the coil. So there's two technicians for the engine dyno. They're both Ron and Stan. Stan did the tuning on the laptop and Ron did the controls for the load and the throttle on the engine. Uh, now they started their process of tuning this thing in 500 RPM increments with low load and then slowly climbing, adding more load to the engine, eventually get into like 8,000 RPMs, 9,000, 10,000, and then the limit of 11,000 RPMs where they hung this thing on the limiter for like four or five seconds. <laughs> yep. It was insane. In the middle of the dyno session, Ron had the engine like kind of loaded up. It started climbing in RPMs and all of a sudden the thing just cut out. And Ron and Stan like look at each other like, oh shit, uh, something just happened. And then I'm in the back like, are you serious? I sold my whole pro car and this thing just blew up on the dyno. Like seriously, like the worst thoughts that you could possibly have. Turns out it was fine. <laughs> it was just like a sensor or something uh, that stopped working and it was more of a safety thing that just cut the motor out or it lost ignition input or something like that. So the motor just stopped for safety precaution. It was perfectly fine. Ron went in there, hooked up whatever needed to get fixed and then they fired it back up and continued tuning. But I seriously had like such a friggin' moment of uh, insanity. What an absolutely incredible experience. I gotta say a huge thank you to John Judd Jr., Bryn, Barry, Ron, and Stan over at Judd Power for taking care of me, taking care of my engine. A special thank you to John Reed Racing for getting that dyno harness 
over to Judd in such a short period of time. Judd is one of the coolest companies on the planet because they are still producing these V10 engines. You can still buy them and continue that heritage in racing motorsport. It is so freaking cool to me and I'm just so pumped to actually have one of these things. We are one step closer to getting this thing in a car, baby. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next Formula Supra episode where we tear down my brand new 2020 GR Supra.